This is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. We rise, we shine, we give God the glory on this wonderful Monday morning. I hope, I trust, I pray, as always, that you're blessed wherever you are and wherever you are by the word uh, of the Lord. This morning's text is going to come from um, 2 Samuel chapter number 6. And it's going to be entitled, Take It to uh, the Threshing Floor. Take It to the Threshing Floor. Brothers and sisters, this ideal or this real place, this real object in the scripture uh, of a threshing floor has gained spiritual and metaphorical significance in the scripture. Why? It becomes the place of test, separation, and proving. And when I say take it to the threshing floor, any idea, any relationship, any partnership, any alliance, uh, anything that is worth doing and anything that's worth your endeavor and your time must be first taken to the threshing floor. I can show you the threshing floor in 2 Samuel chapter number 6 when they were trying to bring the Ark of the Covenant into New Jerusalem. But the oxen stumbled. Where did he stumble at? At the threshing floor. And it was at the threshing floor that someone died because they were doing the right thing the wrong way. I can see the threshing floor when Jesus has a conversation with Peter. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you that he might sift you as wheat. Hint, hint, threshing floor. He's trying to separate the flesh of you from the spirit of you, from that which is carnal from you, from that which is divinely proclaimed about you by Almighty God. I see the threshing floor in the story, in the narrative of Ruth and Boaz. Where did Ruth meet Boaz and where did they consummate their relationship? Where did she get her husband from? She got him from the threshing floor because it was at the threshing floor that God let her know, let him know unequivocally that this is the person that you ought to spend the rest of your life with. So they established their covenant relationship and arrangement at the threshing floor. If it does not pass the threshing floor, you should not have it in your life. Allow God to separate that which is real from that which is phony in your life. Take your friends to the threshing floor. Take your relationships to the threshing floor. Take your ministry to the uh, threshing floor. Take your own mind, your ideas, your vision. Take it to the threshing floor and allow God to separate out that which is not like him. And anything that you do in your life that's worth your time, that's worth your energy, that's worth your endeavor, you ought to take it to the threshing floor. Now, when God separates, let God have his way. Don't go chase down that which did not surpass or pass or prove itself at the threshing floor. Because if you're taking it to the threshing floor, you're saying to God, I need you to choose for me. I need you to separate out from me. God, push back, help me to suppress my own flesh. Help me to do your will and not my own. And although this makes me feel good, it may not be good for me. Why? Because I brought it to the threshing floor. So I hope, trust, pray that everything, every single solitary thing that you do, every single solitary thing that you endeavor in, your ministry, your life, your family, your friends, whatever it is that you uh, engage in in life, that you'll make sure it clears your threshing floor. To the next time, God is good all the time and all of the time. God is showing up good. Be blessed.